This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Hey, hello, hi, and how you doing? Gordo the Tech Star here. Welcome to another thrilling and exciting episode of Hibachi Talk. You may notice that I am without my co-host and I'm without a guest, so what you have today is me, myself, and I. And we're going to talk about why it's so lucky we live in Hawaii. I got a little tongue-in-cheek um, uh, view of why we're so lucky to live in Hawaii. So pull up a chair, grab yourself a libation, sit down and join us. And remember that when Hibachi talks, people listen. So um, it's election season is upon us um, in Hawaii. And um, there's lots of opportunities for people to be shuffling around. And I thought, you know, let me go down the list of why I think it's great that we live in this, in this state, you know, and, and all the things that, that we've been able to um, uh, enjoy as, as a result of living in Hawaii. So I have, I have 12 um, uh, ideas uh, on what I think makes us special. Um, there's a key word here called sarcasm, so I'll make a note of that. There may be a little bit of that uh, in this, but um, we can start with, um, with the ones that um, no one can take credit for except Mother Nature and whoever else. And that'd be reason number one. Now, why is it great to live in Hawaii? Well, you can't beat the weather. Now, the weather is excellent. Um, the beaches are great. As a matter of fact, on the Big Island, I think we have a beach that's ranked in the top, one of the top 10 beaches in the world. Um, surfing is great if you're a surfer. The water is warm. Um, you can't beat that. And, um, but the weather in the past couple of months has not been that great, especially if you live on Kauai. Kauai got pounded and Oahu got pounded in the past month um, and it brought something to mind for me. It's like, you imagine how much easier it would be for us to get materials, services and support to Kauai if we had the super ferry. We had the super ferry. Uh, it was able to transport goods and services and product and people to Kauai, um, but Kauai was one of the biggest islands in, who opposed the super ferry. So I'm just putting that down as, you know, we, the weather's great. Sometimes we have bad weather, um, but opportunities certainly could have been there if we had um, uh, been a little bit more visionary in what was going to be happening in the future and how we could use it. Because if we ever get hit with a hurricane or a tsunami or any of those things and, and, and the islands that get, could use services that come from Oahu, um, we only got one choice or two if you want to count the airplanes, and that's a lot of money. But the weather is great. The beaches are great. Surfing is great, water is warm. Okay, the number two reason why it's lucky we live Hawaii, and let's take a look at that one. Well, it feels like poverty. Uh, we have a lot of homeless, but the weather's good, and so it's not that difficult. But just to give you a sense, if you um, uh, live in Hawaii, you need to make about $150,000 per year as a single individual. Um, that would be the equivalent of $75,000 per year. So, um, Take a look at that one. A uh, fair number of homeless, I wonder why. Um, many people in Hawaii work multiple jobs. We've actually had uh, legislators brag about the fact that many people in Hawaii have multiple jobs, as if that's what we should be doing. Maybe we should not have multiple jobs and people should, should um, be able to take care of their families and, and spend time with their families, rather than leaving one job and um, uh, having to go work in another and leave these kids latched up and, and at home. So that's a bit of a challenge, but you know, um, the weather's good. You gotta remember that. And our pay is below the uh, national average, despite the fact that our cost of living is extremely high. And you know, one of the, the guys in here today said, I hope you remember talking about the high cost of living. Uh, yeah, duh, here it is, high cost of living. So that's reason number two why we lucky we live away. Reason number three. Now, well, before I get into number three, someone's gonna say to me, well, you know, Gordon, you're sick in here and you're being, you're, you're being kind of sarcastic about what's going on in Hawaii. Why don't you do something about it? Okay, wait, gang, don't, don't give that back to me. I came here with $500. I worked as an appointee in government for eight years and gave, gave up eight years of a great salary to work in government as an appointee for eight years to try to do my best to turn this thing around. So if you want to come in and do that to me, then you come in and you give up eight, four to eight years of your life and you go work in, the, uh, in, the, in government and you try to turn it around. Anyway, uh, reason number three, uh, to live in Hawaii, and I have my own business, and so I can certainly attest to this. It's one of the worst places to start a business. Um, Forbes always 
ranks high near the bottom when it comes to government support of business. Um, our our uh, tax laws are onerous on um, businesses, general excise tax um, that we have to pay constantly as, as business owners. Um, they even track how much you make, and if you make more than they uh, expect you to make in a particular period of time, they'll make you pay monthly rather than quarterly or semi-annually or annually. Um, and so there's onerous business taxes. And, um, and finding quality of employees it can be tough sometimes. Um, we have essentially a, a zero unemployment here in Hawaii right now. There are people everywhere looking for jobs. I don't care if you drive into Kailua and look at Target, if you drive in, into downtown, you drive into Ala Moana, there are signs everywhere looking for people who are trying to hire. The labor unions need, uh, or the labor companies need uh, laborers, Techni technical people. I got a call today looking for three, uh, see if I could help someone find three um, technical people. I mean, they're just, the, the shortage of labor is amazing. If they have to be drug screened, that caused another problem. I have an associate that works for um, TSA. They went on a, um, a hiring um, a situation on one of the neighbor islands. They had 50 applicants and all but three. Three passed the drug test, three out of 50. Um, so a little bit of a challenge there when it, when it comes to the, those kinds of things. Anyway, reason number four why we want to live in Hawaii. What is reason number four? Oh yeah, here we go. Our education system. Our education system is ranked near the bottom when it comes to public school. Um, the public school education system, um, as far as long as I can remember, has been uh, marginal. In 2017, Wallet Hub ranked Hawaii number 39th overall and 43 for quality in all the um, states around the country. This is, a, this is an interesting situation here because I'll go back to my comment about um, stat, uh, hiring employees. You want to hire an employee, and why would a, a, um, um, a high-tech um, person move to Hawaii to work in Hawaii when the education system is substandard and the uh, pay are below what they would make on the mainland, um, but the weather's good. Um, to come here for the weather, and maybe that's it. So it's a real, it's a real uh, juxtaposition because it's hard to recruit good talent to come to Hawaii if they're not going to be able to send their kids to a, a good school. Now, don't get me wrong, not all the public schools in the state of Hawaii are bad. Um, there are a number of them where the principals have just taken the bull by the horn, so to speak, and said, we're going to go and do it the way we should do it, and they're going to move forward with that. Uh, and, and have improved some of the, some of the schools. So, like Waianae High School. The last place in the world when you say Waianae in Hawaii, I say, oh, why would that be any good? Well, that's one of the, one of the better public schools in, in the state of Hawaii. And um, yet you've got others that are more um, uh, affluent areas that may not be that good. Um, and this is, I think, a reflection not only in the school system, but the parents who participate are involved in what's going on within the uh, school systems themselves. Okay, so let's take a look at um, reason number four why it's lucky we live Hawaii. We do have one of the best private school systems in the country. Our private school systems are ranked as, uh, I think they're ranked number one in the nation. Duh. I wonder if it has anything to do with the previous slide on why we have one of the poorest. Um, well, don't get me with number nine yet. Go back to that. Keep me, no, number four and then number five. Thank you very much. Um, so our private school systems are one of the best. Hey, um, uh, Obama came from the private school system here in Hawaii. Um, so we've had a president of the United States that actually came out of the private school system of Hawaii. Now, if you want to send your child to a private school in Hawaii, in 2017, you can expect to spend about anywhere between fifteen dollars and $22,000 a year per year per student. Um, you have two children, that would then move it to around thirty dollars to $35,000 a year. Um, that could be as high as forty-five to fifty thousand a year to send your child to school. This starts at kindergarten, by the way. This doesn't start at um, at uh, uh, high school. This is starting at, at kindergarten all the way up through elementary. Um, this is uh, equivalent of, of um, sending your kids to college. Um, you know, so that's that's a huge chunk of your gross income after taxes that you have to spend to send your child to to, to a school in Hawaii. 
So the fact that I mentioned earlier, you have to make $150,000 a year to meet the $75,000 a year level on the mainland, add another forty-five dollars to $50,000 a year to that particular um, income level so that you can now sit at the $200,000 a year um, paycheck level. And by the way, our salaries are lower than the national average. Um, and we haven't even talked about what's going to cost you to buy a house here. So um, again, lucky we live in Hawaii. The weather's good. The beaches, as you can see, are great. The water's warm. And now we have reason number six. We'll do number six, and then I'll take a break, and we'll do the ones after that one. Anyway, reason number six, and I mentioned to a moment, first-time ownership is near next to impossible. If you are a first-time owner in Hawaii and you don't have the backing of money um, from whatever opportunity, it may be your family, um, uh, maybe you won the lottery, right, um, whatever, um, it's, it's really tough. In 2017, the median price for a single-family home, and medium is middle. It's not average. It's in the middle. That's, that's the median price of a home in Hawaii, on Oahu was $712,000. That's the middle price. So that's not the, you're not talking cream of the crop houses here. You're probably talking about a 5,000 to 6,000 square foot lot. Um, and your neighbor is going to be right next to you um, within a few feet uh, of each other. And uh, a condo is about $415,000. And rents are off the scale. Um, and you just do the math. You got about $142,000 to carry, carry a $570,000 mortgage um, for a home. And, and that's median. Again, I'll say medium, in the middle. And uh, $83,000 to carry a $332,000 mortgage on a condo. And let's not forget what the maintenance fees are going to be on a condo because the condo has to maintain um, all of those properties, and those properties are more expensive to maintain here in Hawaii than they would be if, say, you're on, a, on, on the mainland. And then you've got, um, you know, jokingly said that, you know, apartments and rentals in Hawaii are, are off the scale. It's resulted in what's um, was known as these monster houses that are being built, um, where you've got individuals who are building these large homes um, with many, many bedrooms in them, like 12, 14 bedrooms in them, um, to accommodate um, people, giving them an opportunity to have somewhere to live, maybe um, sharing a kitchen, maybe sharing bathrooms um, and such, but um, it's causing disruption in the neighborhoods because of parking and a whole bunch of other things. And again, we're back to this housing situation that we have uh, here in Hawaii. And then I go back to my first slide where I showed us that we have a lot of homeless people. Um, actually, I think we're ranked near the top in the nation as, as the number of homeless. But the weather's good and the oceans are great. So that's where we're at. So anyway, I've done, I've done through six reasons lucky we live Hawaii. I still live here. Um, I will still continue to live here. I will still try to do my best to make some changes around here, but we'll see what happens as we move forward. So we'll be back in a minute after we pay some bills, because they're expensive here, and we'll come back with the next six reasons why lucky we live Hawaii. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Match day is no ordinary day. The pitch, hallowed ground for players and supporters alike. Excitement builds. Game plans are made with responsibility in mind. Celebrations are underway. Ready for kickoff, MLS clubs and our supporters rise to the challenge. We make responsible decisions while we cheer on our heroes and toast their success. Elevate your match day experience. If you drink, never drive. Good afternoon. My name is Howard Wig. I am the proud host of Code Green, a program on Think Tech Hawaii. We show at three o'clock in the afternoon every other Monday. My guests are specialists, both from here and the mainland, on energy efficiency, which means you do more for less electricity and you're generally safer and more comfortable while you're keeping dollars in your pocket. Hey, aloha. How you doing? Gordo the Techs are here. Welcome to Hibachi Talk. We're talking about Lucky We Live Hawaii. Toss one of those back. Anyway, um, we're talking about why, why it's Lucky We Live in Hawaii. And it's a little bit tongue-in-cheek look at what's going on. Uh, partially in part because the election season's upon us and um, uh, everybody that's running for office is going to tell us how it's going to make it even better than what it is today. So let me go through, uh, quickly through the, for, through the first six I did in the first half. One, the weather is great. Two, a lot of poverty here, a lot of homeless. 
You need to make a lot of money, 150,000 versus 75,000. Three, one of the worst places in the, in the country to do business, according to Forbes magazine. Number four, we're near the, bo near the bottom when it comes to public education. <sighs> number five, one of, the one of the best, best private school systems in the entire country. And number six, uh, first time ownership is almost impossible. So I'll just add to that, you know, how, how was I able to buy my first home here, uh, only coming in with a, with a few hundred dollars? I ended up becoming a real estate agent. So I had a second job became a real estate agent, and the commissions that I use on selling real estate, I use to help me buy my first home. I'm not a real estate agent now, um, but my intent was the only way I knew I could come up with a down payment to buy my first property was to be the agent that would be selling properties and, and as such taking those dollars to help me buy my first home. Uh, I'm a tech guy. I mean, I'm just, you know, that, that, was, that was it. My, maybe I should have stayed in it, but um, I enjoyed it uh, a lot, and it helped me get my first home, second job. Okay, number seven reason why you want to live in Hawaii. And we'll bring up that reason number seven, traffic and roads. Our traffic and roads are ranked number two in the nation for the worst traffic. Oh, look at my spelling error there. Worst trafis. <laughs> I didn't know how to, I don't know how to spell traffic. Um, so we have uh, rank number two in the nation. Our traffic and roads are really bad. I mean, if you live on Oahu, the potholes are unbelievable. Unbelievable. Um, the average time spent in traffic um, in Hawaii is about 58 hours per year. That's average now, average. Not the middle, but average. So there are many people spending a lot more, especially if you're driving in from the Waianae side uh, or the Eva side. Uh, you get one accident and um, traffic is backed up forever in either direction. Um, so it's, it's, it's pretty brutal. We do not have a mass, we have a great bus system. We have one of the best bus systems in the world. So there's an upside. Um, we have one of the best bus systems in the world. We're in the process of building a rail system that is very controversial, 100% uh, plus over budget. Um, I have my opinions on what we should do, but I'm going to keep that because, again, I try not to be political on any of those kinds of things. Certainly do it after hours and, and, and when we're sitting around having a libation or two and, and talking about it. Um, and another thing that I thought was interesting is that we don't have a lot of radio stations. And, um, and we don't have serious radio, so we cannot get the satellite radio. And so um, the good thing is, though, you've got your mobile device and you can, you can pick up some of the the um, radio stations on your mobile device, and now the cars today, you can plug into there. But there are not a lot of radio stations in Hawaii. And um, I've always found that as kind of a, an intriguing situation. And I doubt there'll be many more based on the fact that we now have these technologies to uh, replace it. Okay, number eight. Reason number eight um, why it's lucky we live in Hawaii. Everything is really expensive. I mean, everything is really expensive. Um, and I, and I blame it in part on our, our tax situation that we have here. Um, you know, people go to the store and they, um, they pay a 4.77% sales tax and they go, wow, our sales tax is low, so low. But we pyramid our sales tax here. So we tax the product from the moment it comes in on the boat to the moment it gets to you multiple times along the way to the point where our sales tax is actually 16% or more. So we're a 16% sales tax state, and we're a high tax state. We're one of the ranked top high tax, highest tax states in the nation. And here's other things we do. And this is where I think we start again. Uh, it's election time, but you know our lawmakers who are looking out for our best interests still tax medications. They still tax hospitals. They still tax doctor visits. They still tax services. We tax food. And um, we have one of the highest government overheads because we tax almost everything. Um, and in this just sales tax alone, we won't even talk about all the other taxes that are added, like your payroll taxes, your, um, your income taxes, and such. Um, and then we have an, an interesting situation in Hawaii is that our shipping costs are higher um, than, than many other places because of the Jones Act, which has never been changed in all these dec dec decades. The Jones Act requires that all the shipping from the U.S. mainland arrives on a U.S. flag ship. That means we cannot use um, other ships. So a product that goes to Hawaii from China on a Chinese flag ship goes from here, from China, goes past Hawaii, goes to the west coast of the United States, goes from that ship onto another ship and comes back to Hawaii. Why does it cost more? I think you might be able to figure this out. Just think about this whole kind of thing. So this is the, the kinds of things that, that are sitting there um, preventing us from having a lower cost of living here in Hawaii than um, 
we would say other cities, states, or even countries for that matter. Um, and so as I just says, is, is everything expensive or I just feel poor? I mean, it's just what it is. And I, I feel sorry for um, seniors like myself, and not me, me, but seniors who are sitting now on really fixed incomes. I mean, I'm a senior, but I'm still working. Um, there may be a reason for that. Um, but there's, there's, there's um, uh, that, that group that are sitting on um, uh, just a fixed income. And we keep moving the taxes around, property taxes are going up, all these other kinds of things. So again, reason number eight, it's really expensive here. So we have a lot of people leaving Hawaii in the past year. So we, have a, we had a negative in 2017 um, on people moving in versus out. We had more people move out of Hawaii than move in. I wonder why. Duh. Okay, now we have reason number nine, and this is a really good thing. We, uh, uh, for many, many years, uh, Hawaii passed the Prepaid Health Care Act. And the Prepaid Health Care Act um, requires that businesses who offer, uh, must offer health care insurance to employees who work more than 20 hours per week for four or more consecutive weeks. And this is actually one of the reasons that um, intrigued me about moving to Hawaii because it, this Prepaid Health Care Act actually was something that no, no one in the country had. Um, it, it reminded me of Canada and, uh, and, and their health care policies. And so you know, it, it was a, it's a very positive thing. It's a little bit onerous on the business side, but, but I'm willing, you know, from a business owner, I'm willing to give that up in order to um, uh, enable health care to be provided. But then here, what we go and do, this is the one that blew me away. We spent $90 million for, for Obamacare to put it in a computerized Obamacare system when we didn't need to. We had the prepaid health care act. We met the requirements of Obamacare. We did not have to tr go in and put in Obamacare in Hawaii. And that system collapsed and got shut down, but we spent $90 million of taxpayer money. And people go, yeah, but it wasn't, it wasn't state money. It was federal money, but you know what? That's my money. I still pay federal taxes. You still pay ta state taxes. And so that $90 million for a system that failed, that wasn't needed, who knows why we decided to do that, um, uh, happened. And then we have a shortage of doctors. And that's what was in the paper a couple of weeks ago. Um, our doctor situation here in Hawaii now has gotten, is getting, what I would think, getting close to borderline critical, especially on some of the neighbor islands. Um, and I think one of the things that's in there that, that, that causes it, besides all the things I said earlier, but the weather's good and the beaches are warm, um, is tort reform. Tort re we, um, our litigation situation here for, for doctors is terrible. And um, tort reform has been booted around for 20 plus years. Um, it hasn't changed. Um, no one wants to get off, off the pot and change it. And um, again, if we need to get doctors coming back here um, for more than just the weather and the, and the um, uh, warm water, uh, we better do something uh, in, in that space. Anyway, number, reason number nine. Okay, reason number 10. Surprise, surprise. We have the highest electricity. electricity. Oh, what a great new term. We have the highest electricity. It is, elect it is an electricity. We have the highest electricity cost in the nation. This is an electricity. Um, uh, with all the sun, with all the sun, and all the wind, and all the water and waves, and everything, um, we're still burning coal. We're still burning um, oil here in, in Hawaii. Um, and, and look at the numbers. They're just right here. Our national average per kilowatt hour, again, this is average per kilowatt hour is 12.8. 84 cents on Oahu we're paying 37 cents per kilowatt hour for electricity that equates to $334 a month on average for your bill so add that 334 a month to your private school education that you have to pay for and your sales taxes that you have to pay pay for compounded at 16 up to 16 percent and here's what you got this is it so your electric bill is going to be about four thousand dollars a year and now, and as a result of this, we've coined a new term, electricity, and it is electricity um, when we have all of this. We have, um, which I find very unique, we have a, uh, we have, I still believe it's still there, we have a one mile long coal conveyor belt at Campbell Industrial Park. Um, the, uh, the, coal, the ships come in, unload the coal on this conveyor belt, it gets wrapped, and then the coal gets pulled all the way along to the, um, uh, cogeneration facility where they burn the coal. Now we do burn our trash out there and that is a form of recycling even though some people debate with me on that but if you're burning trash to create electricity to me that is recycling uh, rather than putting all of it in the landfill. Anyway, highest reason number 10, highest electricity cost in the nation. Number 11, when you add it all together and too bad I didn't do 13. I should have done 13 reasons and this could have been 13 but we're the 13th highest cost of living in the country. 
And I think I just said it all. There's a whole number of reasons why, and we're ranked up here as the 13th highest cost of living in the country. But the weather's good, and the water's warm, so we got to deal with that. Okay, reason number 12, and this is, you know, again, you take this for what it's worth. Um, I'm going to quote Mark Twain here. Um, it's a great quote. I've seen it in a number of places. I see it a lot lately. Politicians and diapers should be changed often for the same reason. Mark Twain. It's a pretty great, great quote. But anyway, another great reason that we live in Hawaii is the fact that we're predominantly a blue state. I mean, um, it's, it's predominantly Democrat. Um, of the 14 presidential elections that have been involved in, that Hawaii's been involved in, we've uh, 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 backed 12 Democratic nominees that have won the state that have that have won the state for president of the United States. So you know, again, on the upside, we've got all all the blue happening here. The curt word sarcasm. Don't forget that. For as long as I can remember, the state House and Senate has had a Democrat Democratic majority. So for as long as I can remember. I, I don't remember our state being any more than, than a strong Democrat. So we know they can get a lot of things done. You know, always know that we're going to get a lot of things done. And then the number, next reason is six Democrat governors and two, Republic, two Republican governors since statehood. I think our first governor was Republican. And then after that, um, we've had uh, Democrats. And then Linda Lingle was a um, uh, Republican. But then the House and Senate were still controlled by uh, the Democrats. Anyway, the number 12 reason, if you're certainly a blue person um, and, and light blue, this is definitely the, this is definitely the state you want to be in. Anyway, that's, that's my summarizing um, the 12 reasons that um, uh, it's great and lucky that we live Hawaii. Um, if you want to comment on this or um, give me some more ammunition uh, to help support why it's great to be here, please um, um, check us out on Twitter at Hibachi Talk. Check us out on Facebook at HibachiTalk.com. Um, you can check us out on, um, email me um, at uh, HibachiTalk at Outlook.com. Yeah, send it there. Um, and you can follow the show on YouTube. Anyway, this is a little bit of a change from our uh, Hibachi Talk shows of the past. I uh, just wanted to give you a perspective on us, why it's lucky we live in Hawaii. And when Hibachi talks, people listen. And like I say at the end of every show, how you doing?